We're going to be doing a quick market summary. We're talking about inflation. We're talking about foreign exchange, FX. We'll be talking about cryptocurrencies. We'll be talking about bonds, certain stocks and shares, gold, oil. We'll have an overall recap of what's going on essentially this week. Don't forget that we've got obviously an options course on the 5th of June. If you want to learn options, there'll be also a live trading session on the 5th of June. On the 19th of May, Sunday 19th of May, we've got a fundamentals workshop that you can join also. Any of that information, anything that you need, you can just DM me, send me a message, and I'll be more than happy to facilitate. Also, don't forget that we've got the VIP workshops, we've got coaching, got mentoring, got one-to-ones, got a whole array of things for you to be successful. Let's kick off, let's have a look what is driving markets. So the main essential driver of the markets has been the interest rate outlook. So interest rates are going down. No one's mentioned they're going down specifically, so you've got to look at really the macroeconomics, the economic numbers, say, okay, why will interest rates go down? Well, everyone is waiting for the US, for the Fed to make their interest rate decision. They've indicated that the next move will be down, and the markets like that. They shot up as a result after that post FOMC Federal Open Market Committee meeting which was last week or two weeks ago. So that like that, they've got a bit of encouragement for that and the markets have reached all-time highs. Not sure if they're going to stay at all-time highs because they have got really overvalued and overinflated. There's definitely a bubble being formed or has been formed and yet everyone's waiting for that bubble to pop. Even myself on a regular basis I'm calling for or stating out there's going to be a market crash as far as financial markets are concerned. With the Dow touching just above 40,000 and the Nasdaq 18,650 or 60, S&P 5,300, UK is at 8,450, the DAX, all markets are sky high. And that in itself essentially is also a warning sign. You can't always have continuous rises and no correction. There's been no correction in financial markets for some time. The one back at the end of March was a slight correction. The markets just jumped up. So the trend is definitely pushing higher, mainly being led by the high-tech IT sector and obviously AI, artificial intelligence, and ChatGPT being the market leader there is NVIDIA and AMD applied micro devices. So that's it more or less on the equity side. If we were to break that down and look into the sector by sector, well, as I said earlier on, the main sector that's driving markets is actually the Nasdaq and the high-tech sector. They are the ones that's pushed the markets up. They pulled the markets up, the Apples, the Microsoft, the Amazons, the Nvidia, the Facebooks, or Meta, whatever they want to call it. Facebook's actually going down as it happens. The Facebook part of Meta is contracting. But overall, that is what's been driving equity markets higher. On the FX or the foreign exchange front, which I'm sure many of you are traders, whereby you've got a little pulling going on, especially on dollar yen. Now, dollar yen's an interesting one because you would expect the dollar essentially to fall or dollar yen to fall, but dollar yen's been rock solid at 155, 155 and a half, 156 did touch 160 a couple of weeks ago and came all the way back down to 153 before bouncing back up. So the Japan is in stagflation, which is growth, it's just no growth and high inflation. So Japan has a major problem. They need to raise interest rates. But if they raise interest rates, they're going to send the economy into a flurry because the Bank of Japan is the biggest holder of Japanese government bonds. So by essentially by raising interest rates and make the issue of those bonds more expensive. So they've got themselves into a very difficult situation. China, as it happens, is going to be the next country that follows on like Japan. So China is also going to go into a situation of slowing or contracting growth. They've got lower retail sales, their property sector is in disarray, exports, imports are completely imbalanced, and it looks like they'd have to probably withdraw some of their overseas investments and reinvest it in the local economy. They have had several stimulus packages which have simply not worked as far as China is concerned. But going back to markets, again, all of this I discuss in the workshops, on the fundamentals, on the beginners group on a Monday evening. So you've got all these workshops you can join in order to help you trade 
and be more successful. So going back to market, so foreign exchange dollar yen shouldn't normally be floating down to about the 145. I personally see it all the way down to about 140 at some stage by the end of this year. Pound dollar, which is cable, again, struggling a bit. The pound seems to have upper resistance about 127 to the dollar, 127 and a half. Again, all depends if interest rates in the US come down. But the UK is also looking to reduce interest rates simply because the UK economy, European economy, American economy, even though the Americans are manipulating some of the numbers, overall the US economy is in disarray. Small to medium sized businesses are seeing a major reduction, a major reduction in their overall production, their overall revenue. Same in the UK, you've got businesses that are just not doing well. So the UK or the Bank of England is quite aware of that and they're probably going to reduce interest rates in the near future. Crypto, can't avoid crypto and you can't even go through any type of uh, broadcast on any channel, any platform that mentioned crypto. So Bitcoin is had a big day this week, moved up 7.5% in one day. So it jumped over $4,000 in one day, which is huge. So on the crypto front, what you've got is Bitcoin again, heading towards the 70, 72,000 level. It needs to break out of that. If it breaks out of that, then it's gonna go all the way up to 100,000 very, very quickly or even higher. So Bitcoin now is getting more embedded in the financial system. It's still a volatile and erratic instrument, or erratic asset. It's got no main stability to it. It's not yet a safe haven in case you're gonna ask that question. But as far as Bitcoin is concerned, you would see that Bitcoin will actually be trending up, especially now that more and more businesses and more companies are either investing in it or creating an ETF for the general public to get involved. So it is getting more and more popular and will continue its upward movement. Gold, massive run gold. Gold, again, is heading for the 2400. It needs to break up above 2400 for it to move higher. And once it breaks above 2400, then we're talking about 2500, 2550. I did have a target for gold this year at 2400, but that was by the end of the year, not by the middle of the year. So I have really, I have up revised up with that target to 2550 by December of this year because I just see gold as a lot of momentum and is picking up. Again, we do have workshops specifically that do discuss oil and gold and commodities. So if you're interested in those workshops, you can contact me and we can get you on board as well on a course or on a workshop, whichever, whatever suits you. Also, if you've never traded before, don't be intimidated. We also have classes for beginners to help beginners learn to trade and participate in Zooms. So going back to commodities, oil, pretty quiet on the oil front, not much happening. But Lebanon and Israel are heading for war. Hezbollah controls southern Lebanon. Huge amount of cross exchange of fire there. Hezbollah is firing rockets on a daily basis into Israel. Israel is just holding off at the moment because they're dealing politically and and uh, and uh, military militarily with Hamas in Gaza. So they probably want to finish that off first before they go and tackle Hezbollah. But that is a regional crisis there, which normally should impact oil. Hasn't yet. Hasn't impacted oil. So that's something they should keep an eye on. That's more or less it for now. So reminding you, we've got the one-to-one -one mentorship, we've got the coaching, we've got the VIP mentorship, we've got the workshops, the courses, we've got the Zoom calls, we've got every facility available for you to enhance your trading. So I hope you enjoy the channel and share, subscribe, comment, interact. More than happy to give you as much information as possible. This is Mayor Valensky with Driving Markets. Have a great day.